All right, guys, so I'm going to start taking apart the front of that Fusion, the uh, 1400 dollars car, 1700 dollars car. And uh, I figured, let me show you, or touch on the points of what I have to do, what I have to take apart. So there it is right there. I'm actually going to shut the fans off momentarily so you can actually hear me. Because the fans themselves are quite loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clips out here and here, all three of those for the front fender liner to the bumper cover. And I'm going to take all of these screws out that run along here. Because I realized too, this inner shield actually is torn on this side. That's really not a big deal. I could put a washer on the one side of it or even put a clip to hang it in place. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take all of that stuff off and then we're going to go from there. I'm going to have to disconnect the fog lights. I think these are not just reflectors. I think there's a bulb in there. But let me start by doing that. Now to get those clips off, you need the little panel tool, like pickle fork type tool, because you're going to reach in in between here and pry that out. It's like a nail in it or a wall anchor and it spreads the outer part or that outer piece there will actually spread apart on the inside there and lock it in place. So relatively simple, you take a tool like this. I love this tool. I have lost this in the past. I don't know, what is this? It's a snap-on. Does it give a number? I don't know if you can read that. I'll put the part number in the description. This to me is like one of the best panel tools I've ever purchased before. I've lost this in the past and I've purchased the same one again because I've gotten other ones that just don't work as well as this one. I love this tool. So anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to go in between the two like so and you pry it out. And now that should come right out just like that. And there it goes. And as you can see right there. Once it's in the hole there, that'll lock in place and it'll lock these tabs to hold that thing in place. So let me get all of those out and then take all those screws out. With the lower shield out, the one that's right there, and everything else loose like this, you can actually look up inside here and you can see the fog lights and the side marker light. The side marker light comes right out and I think I've had issues with these before. Is there a locking tab on these? <clears throat> yeah, no, actually, there it goes. Okay, it hits that tab there. I didn't even realize it. So now that's out of the way, and it's not hooked to the bumper. Now, some of these will have, uh, see, this one's kind of in a bad spot. Well, actually, did it punch a hole in that? No, it didn't. Okay, so this one might be easier to disconnect. The connector but we'll see i'm gonna have to do that with two hands but i'll pull this out and then what i'll do is i'm gonna let this thing down and i'll get everything off from up top and i'll show you that on a lot of vehicles that have front bumper covers like this this one doesn't have it but on a lot of them right in this corner here usually coming up from the bottom side will be a screw holding the edge of the uh, bumper cover to the fender so you got to look for that this does not have that setup this will actually just pop out there, you see it's actually moving, so but it locks into like a retaining clip inside there. So let me let this down some more. And here you can actually get a pretty good view. If you look, this channel here, this is the locking clip, and this edge on the bumper cover will go up and sit in there. I can't get it up in there right now because this front bumper cover is so deformed. But this edge will go in there and snap in place. That's what holds these things flush, you know, to the fender and it you know matches up. So now this should, like I said, I don't know if I can actually do this one hand, because it's the form. There it goes. That's it. It just popped. And like I said, see, you can see the edge there. How it would grab a hold of the plastic inside there to lock it in place. A lot of times these things break and you have to replace them. This one's not broken, so that's okay. But this screw a lot of times will hold the headlight in place also, so you have to pay attention to that. The bumper cover pretty much just dropped off. It's actually supposed to be part of the grill, but as soon as I unlatched the sides, the thing pretty much just fell off. So it, it actually, this is part of the bumper cover here, these two pieces, which like I said, is part of the grill section. So now I'm gonna pull this off and it's basically just push those same type of clips and then 10 millimeters 
and this whole thing will come out. And I realized the bumper beam actually took a pretty good shot here, which is no big deal because we're replacing it with the other one. Plus I gotta take that off anyway to get the radiator and that out. And there, now the upper piece comes out. And like I said, this is actually supposed to be part of the bumper cover. So really not a big deal. Now looking at this, I'm almost wondering how, what condition is that radiator in that in? I guess we're about to find out. But here, eh, let's, let's dig a little further. These headlights are definitely broken, so I gotta take those out. Whenever you're disassembling something, no matter what it is, never throw anything out until you're done. Like, you never know what you might need. So everything I take off, I'll put in a pile, and until this car is complete, anything I take off, I'm gonna stick in a pile, and I will not get rid of it. Once this car is complete, then I'll throw it out. That's a good habit to get into if you're ever doing anything, no matter what it is, just don't throw the stuff out. And the headlights themselves are held in by a retainer here, 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 and here. Obviously, three points of contact are broken on this headlight. The only thing left holding it in is this. So we're gonna, I always take that stuff out regardless, only so I have it out and available. So I'm gonna do that, get the headlight out of the way, I'm gonna do both sides. Other thing you gotta remember too, even when you're doing something like this, disconnect the battery, which I'm gonna do that next, because here's your impact sensors right here. Now, I gotta undo these and take them off. So disconnect the battery if you're on the safe side so you don't have a problem and blow an airbag. This thing doesn't have any blown airbags, so I don't wanna start. Although this thing could have a problem with the seat belts that I don't know about just yet, but I don't think so because it doesn't have an airbag light on. So, we're, but we're gonna find out. It could have a jammed up seatbelt. It's possible. It may not, but so we're gonna find out. Now, one thing I didn't mention because the hood was open is the damage didn't hit the hood at all. It's got this very little teeny tiny dent here, but we're not too worried about that. And here comes the other vehicle. It just showed up. That's our parts car. But one thing it did do, which I noticed that dent may be part of it. It's slightly bent, if you look. The attachment points are slightly bent because it drove where the hood latch goes, drove that back. I already took that off. So, but all in all, really not that bad. There you see the battery's disconnected because I'm ready to undo this brace where the impact sensors sit. Okay, I got the uh, bumper beam itself unbolted. There's something else holding it in place. I'm not sure what. But because this thing is so bent out of shape right here, with it bolted up here, as soon as I got this last bolt out, it, was, it actually spring-loaded and popped out. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put it up in the air and I'm gonna try to see what's actually holding the rest of this on, I don't recall. The last one I did, um, it all of a sudden it dawned on me, because I'm taking the bolts out of here, and something was ringing a bell. I'm like, hmm, there was something that I had a real problem with on the other one. And then I recalled, basically what you do is, you have this entire thing out as an assembly, and you swap it over as an assembly, uh, basically, if you had to replace the radiator or condenser or anything like that, take this entire thing apart and do it all as an assembly and then put it back on as an assembly. So I'm going to have to drain the coolant now. I already sucked down the AC. The AC was fully charged, so I know the condenser in that is good. But in order to replace this, it's just easier to undo everything and take everything out. Now, if you notice, this one's a four-cylinder. This one is a V6. The radiators and condensers and this upper support, they're the same. I've done it before. Uh, if the V6 has a tow package, it'll have a slightly thicker radiator, but everything's in the same spot. The hose connections, everything's all in the exact same spot. So there is no difference between where anything hooks up. So we're all good there, but we have good headlights, good bumper cover, everything else on this. This thing, from what I could see, it had a minor accident in this fender at some point, and somebody did a real bad job of fixing it and painting it. The body lines are terrible. The paint job is terrible. Uh, oh, and this one, I was told it was rear-ended. It's not rear-ended. This one is actually hit in the left side. And this one actually has decent tires on it too, but this one's hit over here. So, I mean, that's a pretty good hit. It folded over the um, rocker panel and that, so I'm sure the damage is extensive. Uh, it didn't blow any bags. This one's actually got a pretty clean interior too. Reasonably, it's not perfect. The other, one, the other interior is absolutely perfect. This one ain't bad. I'll go with that. But actually, you can see this thing has been repainted also at some point. Who knows what exactly happened. Uh, oh, eh, yeah. Maybe it was rear-ended at some point. Is it me or does that look like a kink? It definitely looks like a kink. This thing was hitting the rear at one time too. Yeah, see this? I wonder. 
wonder if looking in here is going to show me anything. Nothing obvious. You'd be surprised what you find in some cars too. We actually found a gun in one underneath the seat. So let's see. It was a 22 caliber revolver. An older one. But I really don't see much of anything, so if it was hitting the rear, I don't think it was a bad hit. So, all right. Let me continue with that one. Let me put that up in the air and see what's going on. All right, there it is. There's a 10 millimeter down there. It, I mean, it felt loose. It just, I knew there was something else holding it on. I just couldn't see it from up top. So we're going to get those two 10s out and get that support out of the way. And I'm trying to see. I could see it by eye. Let's see if you could see it at all. Oops, too far. You can actually see the the condenser is actually bowed in right there. So from underneath, I got the tranny cooler lines. Got to undo those from the support here. And once those are off, it's actually relatively easy to get the rest of it off. But I got to drain a cooling system and go from there. And then here, I told you about my little spout with the metal piece that when you go to drain, it just helps you guide it. So I'm going to be doing that. All right, let's continue. Now with the bumper beam off, I can actually see that this perch here for the for the bumper beam is bent. And if you look inside, you can see it's bowed. See that on the inside there? So what I'm going to have to do is either try to get a drift in there and punch it out, which will bring this forward, or I'm going to have to get a big uh, slide hammer on the back side here, which is probably what I'm going to have to do. But I don't have a big slide hammer, so we're going to have to see if we can borrow one from somebody, get in there and get that thing yanked out. So that should straighten out. I should be able to do that. That shouldn't really be an issue. It's not frame damage per se. Yes, it is frame damage, but it's not like a bent frame or anything like that. This is all just, you know, right here in front of the front wheels. This is pretty simple stuff. Here we got my little hose with that metal pipe in it that I made up to hook to the drains. This way I can drain it and guide it right into a bucket. Whenever you're draining a cooling system, make sure you pull the cap off too, because that'll help it drain out. So now the next step is I'm going to start taking off anything that's attached here. Obviously, once I get close, I'm going to have to do something to support the hood from, from a different point. Uh, probably from either the bottle here or the top edge of the fender here or there. So let's so keep going with that. And once I get it unbolted and start coming forward, then I can start unhooking stuff from it like once it's hanging. All right, so I got everything disconnected. The hoses are off. The wiring harness is off. The fan is disconnected. The transmission cooler lines are out. There's an O-ring that goes on there that just went flying. No big deal. Uh, I'm just going to remember to put it on. The lower tranny cooler line is easily accessible through there. You can see the fitting. You just go right through the side and grab it. So now the only thing left holding this in place are these two tens, one up there, one up there. If I take those out, this whole entire assembly should come out. So let me go ahead and get that out of the way. Oh, I took the uh, snorkel out for the washer bottle up there and I did take the AC lines off completely just to give myself a little more room when you're taking the upper tranny cooler line out you gotta be careful there's this nipple on the radiator and you don't want to snap that off so just something to be mindful of but yeah so other than that relatively simple the tranny cooler lines do attach to the bottom of the fan shroud so you got to pop those out I already did that so let me do that and get this off of here oh there is a hood switch this is a hood switch so that's disconnected all right, let's, uh, yeah, let's get that off and get this thing out of there. So there it is. It's completely off. As you see, remember I told you the tranny cooler lines attached to the bottom of the fan shroud. No big deal. And like I said, i got to remember to put an O-ring on there. You can see the O-ring on that one. And there's the assembly. Really not a big deal. It's not that difficult. But now also I have room to work to fix that. So, But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disassemble that one get that all ready to be uh, installed onto this one so i'm not going to go over pulling that one apart because it's pretty much the same thing i just did so i'm going to get that done i'm going to start taking it apart now and probably finish taking it apart in the morning uh but that's about it so hope you're getting something out of my videos if you do hit that like button if you could please subscribe have a great day keep branching